Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for the Giving Tuesday Crash Course, Your Roadmap to Success. We're excited to have you here. While we wait for people to trickle in, we'd love to know where you're dialing in from. You can let us know using the chat box feature in the Zoom portal, which you should see at the bottom of your screen. And this will also let me know that you can hear me and that the audio is working. Great, I see Matt from Nashville, someone from Georgia, Washington, Virginia, Ohio. Amazing, keep them coming. Boston, neighbors in New York City. Hi to Trisha from Washington. Amazing, it seems like we have people joining us from all over. All right, so we'll get started. To review, today's webinar is about making sure you're ready for Giving Tuesday, which this year takes place on December 3rd. Last year, over $400 million was raised on Giving Tuesday, and some say this year will bring in over $500 million. While December 3rd seems like a ways away, we want to make sure your nonprofit is prepared with the solidified campaign strategy for this global day of giving. Before we dive in, some housekeeping items. You can ask Q&As throughout, but there will be a time at the end for Q&A. And we have Jamie McDonald from Giving Tuesday joining us. So let's start with questions that are related to best practices. Over the course of this webinar, you'll hear from Jamie McDonald, Strategy and Communities Lead at Giving Tuesday, who will share insights into what works to help you make the most of the next few weeks. Jamie is a social sector entrepreneur and the founder of Generosity Inc. She advises socially motivated business executives and visionaries driving large scale change. Jamie also leads strategy in communities for Giving Tuesday, where she supports nearly 170 community leaders of local campaigns. Jamie joined the Giving Tuesday team after leading three large Giving Tuesday campaigns that together raised $20 million, including the hashtag Be More Gives campaign for Baltimore in 2013. Before becoming an entrepreneur, Jamie was a managing director in investment banking, and we are so lucky to have her joining us today. Thank you so much for joining us, Jamie. Thanks, Molly. It's great to be here. I hope you can hear me okay. Yes, we can. Crystal clear. Great. And hi, everyone. I'm Molly, Director of Strategic Engagement at Give Lively. And after Jamie's section, I will step back in later on to cover incorporating the right Give Lively technology to make a big impact, as well as technology best practices on Giving Tuesday. And on behalf of the entire Give Lively team, thank you so much for joining us. For our Give Lively members, we're excited to see so many of you on today's webinar. And for those of you who are not Give Lively members, I will give a quick introduction to Give Lively so you know who's leading this webinar. So Give Lively is reimagining the future of nonprofit fundraising. We believe nonprofits should never sacrifice their means to satisfy their missions, so we collaborate directly with them to propel the development of our powerful and forever free fundraising platform. How is it free? It's made possible by the generosity of our philanthropist founders who fully cover the cost to operate Give Lively. So that means we never charge you for access to our technology and we never take a, do a cut of your donations. Our platform, which you can see laid out here, allows nonprofits to fundraise online around any occasion, such as digital fundraising appeals, events, peer-based campaigns, and of course, Giving Tuesday. And later on, we'll go over how to leverage these pieces of technology for your fundraising success on this global day of giving. And now I will pass it over to Jamie. Thanks so much, Molly. Hi, folks. I'm really glad to be here with you today and talking about my favorite topic. Um, just one small housekeeping thing. If you want to go over to the question box, if you can, you can leave the chat box now. Um, if any questions come up as I'm talking, feel free to throw them in the, in the question box. Um, if I can address them kind of in stream in my conversation, with you today, I'll do that, but also that'll let us um, make sure that we come back to any questions that we don't answer at the end um, <clears throat> in our Q&A session. Um, and we all know if we don't ask them while we are thinking about them, they often escape us and I don't want you to miss a chance getting a question answered. Um, so I'm really thrilled to be with you today. As, as Molly said, I, I lead the, the strategy work for Giving Tuesday globally and work with our community leaders around the country and around the world. Um, go ahead, Molly, next slide. 
Um, and you got a little bit of background on me, um, but let me, let me just talk a little bit about my Giving Tuesday experience. Um, like many of you, um, I got involved in Giving Tuesday because I was inspired by the idea that um, you know, on the heels of Black Friday and Cyber Monday, there was a day that we could all come together and give. And, um, and I'm based in Baltimore in the greatest city in America. Uh, no disrespect to all the many great cities and towns represented on the webinar today. Um, and I was really inspired by the idea that a day like Giving Tuesday gave us a day to do something big and meaningful for the city of Baltimore. Um, I don't come from a fundraising background. I'm a business person entrepreneur, but, um, but I did feel like, um, like Giving Tuesday was this day that people seemed to be responding to and, um, and gave us a chance to rally our community. And while our campaign certainly was about money and we raised a lot of money in, in a day on that, that first campaign, um, what I learned about Giving Tuesday on that day and a lot of what I'm gonna talk about today is the things that are beyond fundraising. Um, and so I want you to, you know, I want you to think uh, big with me about the possibilities for your campaign, because one of the things we've learned now over seven years of Giving Tuesday is a little bit counterintuitive. Um, and that is that the less you ask for money as a proportion of your touches with a potential supporter, the more likely they are to give. Have I got you confused? The less you ask for money, in the context of all the potential touches that you have with a supporter, the more likely they are to give. And that's because you should balance your communications with supporters around things that authentically inspire them. And that's a lot about what we learned in that first campaign and what we've learned now in campaigns all around the country and all around the world on Giving Tuesday. So we'll come back to, um, to that uh, in a lot of detail as we go through this presentation. Um, next, next slide. So <clears throat> most of you are here today because you work with an individual nonprofit and have, um, you know, are thinking about how you can make the most of the day for, for your individual organization. Um, but one of the things that, uh, that you should recognize is that by, you know, being part of Giving Tuesday, you're really part of a movement that now is um, one of the biggest social movements in the world. Um, we are a movement of millions and millions of people all around the world in every country on every continent. Um, and it's also the first time the entire world has come together on a single day to do anything other than maybe uh, New Year's Eve or something. But even that, even New Year's is different in some different countries. So, um, so as we talk about Giving Tuesday, we're going to definitely be tactical and you know talk about ways that you can make the most of the day for your cause and your organization. But I want you to remember that while you're thinking that through, people all around the world are thinking about how they can make generosity important in their cities, states, and towns and countries um, to sort of move the needle on causes all around the world. <clears throat> Next slide. Um, we have, in addition to sort of on the ground activity in every country and every continent, we have official country movements now in 60 countries around the world. Next slide. And we have in the US 182, actually, I think even in this last week, I think we're up to 188 communities that have dedicated community campaigns. Um, what is a community? A community is a coalition of organizations um, and sometimes they're geographic, like cities, states, and towns. Sometimes they're communities of color and culture. Um, that, and so they're coalitions of organizations that come together on Giving Tuesday to, to amplify the, 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 the volume of their own individual voices, um, as opposed to just um, you know, trying to do things on their own. And we're gonna talk a lot about how working with other organizations can be a really powerful way to do even better for your organization. Um, and the other thing that is important about communities is that um, they're, they, they're all around the country and there may be one in your city, state, or town. And so if you go to givingtuesday.org, you can look on the map and see our community campaigns there. Um, or you can just email info at givingtuesday.org and ask our team if there is a community campaign that you can get connected with in your city, state, or town. 
Um, and, you know, the reason that that is so powerful, and it's what we learned in Baltimore, and it's what we see in city, state, and town campaigns all around the world, is that when everyone feels that sense of, you know, a collective movement, in even in a small place, they're far more likely to give. And so even though you may be sharing the spotlight with a lot of other organizations, what we've learned around the world is everyone does better. Um, so think about whether there's a, a, a local uh, campaign in your city, state, or town, or if you're part of a big community, like if you're a Latino organization, there's a national Latino campaign. Um, there's campaigns that are focused on African Americans. There's campaigns that are focused on national things like National News Day, um, Giving Zoo Day, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, so there's lots of different ways that you can possibly connect into a larger community. Um, and I'd encourage you to think about those. Next slide. Um, so obviously Giving Tuesday has shown that it is a day that can drive um, dollars of donations to nonprofits. This year we passed a billion dollars raised. Um, and that's really just a fraction of the giving because that's just online, just in the US. And so if somebody writes you a check on Giving Tuesday or they donate, um, you know, text to give or in some other way, we don't capture that now. And so really, you know, multiple billions of dollars have been raised um, and it's only growing every year. Next slide. Um, so, you know, we're seven years in now. Um, this will be the eighth Giving Tuesday. What have we learned um, that can help you as you think about your own campaign? Next slide. The first is it's about donors. Um, so I want to, you know, say something that, you know, seems obvious, but uh, it's important to, you know, to always reinforce. It is Giving Tuesday, not Fundraising Tuesday. From our organization's mission, from where we sit as part of the Global Giving Tuesday team, we are about spurring people to be generous in whatever way it makes sense for them. Um, clearly, it's really important that people give money to nonprofits, and we're unapologetic about that as one of the goals of the movement, but it is about giving, not about fundraising. So when we think about it, one of the things we look at is, are we being successful driving donors or potential donors to think about nonprofits? And you know, the answer is yes. Giving Tuesday is now one of only three days in the year where donors look for a nonprofit to support rather than the other way around. And you probably know what the other two are, December 30th and December 31st. So if you're an organization that's on the fence about whether or not to participate in Giving Tuesday, you know, one of the things that we, you know, that we encourage people to think about is, you know, do you want to not be in the conversation on one of the three days a year when donors are looking for nonprofits to support? Um, and so what we're really going to talk about for much of this presentation is how do you make sure that you're in the right conversations, that you're you're sharing the right kind of inspiring messages and that you're putting yourself in places where those donors that are looking for the right kind of organization can find you. Next slide. Um, so it's about young people. One of the things that we do every year is, um, is we survey participants, um, I'm sorry, we survey people all around the United States and um, and we look at just, these are people that give in any way to any nonprofit. They, you know, they don't know that Giving Tuesday is the sponsor of the survey. There's no predisposition to support us. But one of the things that is so amazing that has been uncovered in the research is that um, awareness um, of Giving Tuesday among 18 to 34 year olds is the highest awareness age group, um, partly because I'm sure it's such a social media, you know, phenomenon. Um, and you know, partly because I think just the na the movement nature of Giving Tuesday speaks to young people. Um, and so 60 some percent of 18 to 34 year olds are aware of Giving Tuesday. Of that, 76 percent participate in some way. So think about that. So 60 some percent of 18 to 34 year olds in the U.S. are aware of Giving Tuesday. And of them, 76 percent participate in some way. Next slide. Um, 
And across the board, so this is not just millennials now, this is everybody in the US, of those people who, um, who are aware of Giving Tuesday, uh, th this is every age group, 28% give money, 37% participate in other ways. So they donate food, they participate in a clothing or blood drive, um, they go to an event, they do an act of kindness for someone, um, they advocate on behalf of a cause that they care about, they do a peer fundraiser. Um, and then 35% of all those people who are aware of Giving Tuesday, this is across the board in every age group, do more than one thing. They both give money and do something else. So again, think about that as you're thinking about your campaign. Um, you know, we know that givers are more likely to give money when they've been asked to do other things also, when they're valued for more than their wallets. Um, and so you really want to think about how you, you know, how you push on multiple touch points with, uh, with potential supporters. Next slide. Um, small gifts. It's one of the wraps on Giving Tuesday that, um, in a way, we kind of proudly own. <laughs> so the average gift on Giving Tuesday in the U.S. is $105. Um, you know, it's not pocket change, but it's not a major donor level gift um, by any means. Now, some of that goes hand in hand with the fact that, you know, we're a day when millennials and younger people are inspired to give. Um, but I want to give you a perspective on, um, on how to think about small gifts. So you probably recognize this guy on the bottom in the color picture. Um, that's Michael Bloomberg, the billionaire, former mayor of New York, chairman of Bloomberg. Um, and, um, and in the picture above, directly above him in that same spot, third from the left, is Michael Bloomberg on his uh, day of graduation from Johns Hopkins University. Well, shortly after Michael Bloomberg graduated, this is about 40 years ago, <clears throat> 45 years ago, something like that, um, he was solicited. He made a $5 donation to Johns Hopkins that year. Um, and dollar equivalent, it's about $27 today. So I want you to think for a moment, um, for someone who makes a $27 gift to your organization, what do they get from you? How are they treated? Are you treating them like they're a future Michael Bloomberg, who fast forward has given $2.6 billion to Johns Hopkins? Or do you send them an anonymous tax receipt and maybe some kind of form thank you letter? If you're like most organizations, you're probably doing the latter rather than the former. And so I'd encourage you to start thinking right now in the context of your Giving Tuesday campaign about how to do something different with those people that give on Giving Tuesday. How do you create some form of celebratory recognition of their gift to you, even if it's a really small one? How do you start uncovering those you know, future major givers that are really gonna be the sustainers of your organization in the long term? Because one of them may be your $27 giver on Giving Tuesday this year. So let's give that some thought as we go through the rest of the presentation. Next slide. Um, we really encourage you to innovate and experiment on Giving Tuesday. And one of the things that's terrific about, um, you know, for those of you that are already Give, it, Give Lively members and others that are thinking about it, is Give Lively has um, exactly some of the kinds of tools that can make it easy for you to do some experimentation. I bet that they have things that they offer on their platform that are things that you haven't really tried. Giving Tuesday is an incredible day to experiment. You know, we all know that our sector is changing really fast. Um, you know, the days of phonathons and direct mail are rapidly giving way to, um, to sort of a movement orientation and building a cause, you know, need for digital strategies. Um, clearly online fundraising, you know, is quickly replacing, you know, the old ways of fundraising. Um, you know, phonathons now can be textathons. Like, so, you know, we are so excited when we do our survey every year and we see what this innovation number looks like. Um, that 82% of participating organizations experiment in some way. 
So work with your partners at Give Lively if you're a Give Lively member and think about what experiments you can try this year to really bring new tools into your repertoire of fundraising. Next slide. <clears throat> we, we know how important mobile is and this number just goes up year after year after year. Um, last year, 24% of all Giving Tuesday donations were made from a phone. Um, so one of the things that is super important is that you make sure that you go through your donor's experience on every device that you have, but you for sure want to make sure that you're going through it on a phone. Because um, at the rate this is increasing, this number could be in the mid 30s to, you know, to low 40s this year. Um, so give your, give, go through, give your organization a $5 donation, see what it feels like. You know, work right now with, um, you know, your internal team or your partners at Give Lively or whatever site you work with <clears throat> and make sure that that mobile experience is as seamless as possible because you don't want to have all the hard work that you're going to put in to get a supporter to finally get to your donations, you know, page. And if it's on a phone for it to be difficult and for them to, to not follow through um, with the rest of the donation because you haven't made it easy for them. That's, to me, it's the, it's the worst crime you can make as a fundraiser is to do all the good work that actually gets someone ready to push the button and give, and you give them a hurdle to jump over to make that happen. So make sure you go through your donor's experience and, and have all of your channels, you know, really shaped up so that they're as easy as possible for somebody to give to you. Next slide. Um, so, why has Giving Tuesday worked across the globe? It's because it's a global movement where donors can give locally and feel the impact right around the corner. It's because people feel inspired to do things together. You know, think about, you know, think about the ways that, that we're all interacting these days, you know, how oriented we are toward, you know, our community on social media, even, you know, the way young people use Venmo and no longer are you just, you know, giving, you know, 10 bucks to your friend for, you know, for the lunch that you split. Now you're doing it in this really public way where we're all, it's this idea that we're kind of all in this together. Think about the, the growth in just social movements generally. Think about marches, right? People want to be part of communities that are making a difference. And when you're thinking about how to message Giving Tuesday, that idea that, the, that your supporters are joining a community that's moving the needle on, on a cause or an issue is so incredibly important. It's also really important that you let them know that all kinds of, you know, of giving are valued because you don't wanna turn someone away because they don't have money to give today. If they are maybe a photographer and they could you know, support your organization with a skill um, or it's somebody that, um, you know, that has a big voice on social media and they can share your message, right? Whatever way somebody can give, if you emphasize that, of course, you need money to support, you know, your mission, um, but there are a whole lot of other things you need too. We find that those kinds of campaigns are most effective. Um, you really want to think about partnerships and collaborators where you can, and I'll, I'll share a few examples of that in a minute. We talked a lot about creativity. Um, and remember, and I'll tell you a very short story, but remember that we all have something to give. Um, and so don't underestimate the power of the people that you would normally think about as recipients of generosity in the conversation about giving. And I'll, I'll tell you a short story. So I do uh, talks and, and workshops on generosity all around the world. And I was in Brazil for a workshop in, the, um, in August. <clears throat> and got to sit through a panel after my talk about a campaign that was taking place in San Jose, Brazil. Um, and it was a community campaign where the entire community had rallied around supporting 160 uh, low-income schools where the, they were under-resourced schools. And, um, and they, you know, they had lots of media buzz about it. They were generating lots of support, you know, in the traditional ways, you know, people with money giving to support the campaign. 
Um, and some of the students heard about the campaign. They heard that they were, that their schools were being given money for the campaign. And a group of, you know, of middle schoolers, fourth, fifth, and sixth graders raised their hands and they're like, wait, we have something to give. We're not just like recipients, like we have something to give. And so they, they asked their teachers if they could learn stories and poems um, to go out into the community and give what they could give. And so they decided after, you know, memorizing all these poems and learning stories um, that they were going to partner with the senior centers around San Jose. And students across the city started going into these senior centers and reading to the senior centers and reciting their poems. And pretty soon they realized that there was much more that they could do, that they could participate in feeding the elderly, that they could participate in the dance programs. Dance is a huge thing in Brazil. Um, that they could participate in the craft hours. And so remember when you're thinking about your campaign, about this ideal that we all have something to give, it changes the way you think about how to message people, how to recognize contribution. Um, and when you do think about those kids who didn't want to feel like they were sort of like charity cases, they wanted to feel like they were part of the community of givers in their city. Next slide. So <clears throat> in campaigns across the world, what works? Next slide. If we have to boil it down, we can boil it down to four things. Um, the first is an inspired leader. The second is a clear and big goal. And we're gonna talk about each of these in a little more detail. The third is um, collaboration and partners. And the fourth and perhaps most important is authenticity. It's finding, you know, a brand, a message, and an authentic connection to the people who you're trying to inspire. So you might wonder why I have this picture here. Um, so this is a, a Giving Tuesday campaign from a couple of years ago, where um, this guy who had um, an education nonprofit that also had an arts component, um, said that if they, you know, if they reached a certain number of supporters, they didn't make it about dollars, they made it about number of donors, um, that he would put on a crown, a tutu and carry a scepter and dance with their, you know, with their three-year-old ballet class. And it was a small, silly thing, but it so inspired people. It, it gave them this sense of authentic connection and, he, you know, he did funny things through the period of the campaign where he showed that he had like bought the tutu and the crown. He, you know, he showed them to the girls and like had them laughing at him that he was going to put on this tutu. I mean, he really sort of brought it home. He made his sincere desire to bring new people into their community of supporters, something that was fun and, and, and authentic and that they could rally around. And, um, and it not only did they reach their goal, which of course was, you know, was the real reason that he, he did this, but also people felt really good and connected to the campaign. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Next slide. So let's talk about goal setting. Um, so I could show you a lot of data about Giving Tuesday campaigns that shows that if you have a goal, you are far more likely to have a strong campaign. Um, but let's talk about what makes a goal because it's not, you know, it's a goal is only as good as the way that you set it. And when I think about a goal, if I have to sort of bring it into a more everyday context, the way that I think about a goal for a fundraising campaign is, or, or a supporter campaign is that it's a little bit like deciding you're gonna have a party and then the goal is like deciding on the party theme. So, you know, without a party, then a campaign is just a campaign, right? It's kind of undifferentiated. I mean, without a goal. But once you set a goal, just like when you choose a party theme, now it frames every other decision that you're going to make. So let's stay with that party theme idea for a minute. So if you decide that you're gonna have um, a Cinco de Mayo party, then when you walk into Party City to buy your decorations, you know exactly what aisle to go to. You know what colors you're gonna look at. When you go to the 
store to pick out your food and drink, you know exactly what kind of food and drink you're going to have, right? You're not going to, you're not going to get, you know, uh, pierogies and corned beef and cabbage and buy, you know, leprechaun decorations, right? You're going to buy the food and the drink and the decorations that are consistent with your party theme. So a goal lets you do that same thing. A goal lets you decide exactly what you're going to do and what you're not going to do in your campaign. It lets you decide who you should speak to and who you don't need to expend energy on in this particular outreach. Um, and so what can your goals be about? You know, for most organizations, there's some kind of a money goal, but, um, but there doesn't have to be. You can have a goal that's about number of donors, maybe number of new donors. I love campaigns that are about um, monthly givers. That's a really great thing to do on Giving Tuesday. You know, what you might sacrifice for a few immediate dollars on that day, you gain in long-term supporters that on average by the data will be with you for four years. So think about that. You know, monthly giving can be a really fantastic thing to try to do on Giving Tuesday. Um, if you're an organization that has any kind of membership or alumni, Participation might be a goal that you think about. You might throw an event, and event attendees could be your goal. Um, perhaps you're a young organization and you don't have a big social following. You know, maybe you make your goal reaching a thousand followers on Twitter or you know some other way to to build social followers. And then finally, your goal might be about you know building partnerships or collaborations. But whatever single or combination of goals you choose, let them be the guide for everything else you're gonna do in your campaign and be very clear in all of your communications that that is your goal. People wanna know kind of what party they're going to, not to <laughs> overuse the analogy, <clears throat> but people wanna know what party they're going to and who's gonna be there, right? And kind of what to expect when they get there. So make sure that you use your goal as part of the rallying cry for why people should join you in your Giving Tuesday campaign. Next slide. <clears throat> Think about a passionate leader. Um, I'm guessing for most of you in your organizations, this person might be you, um, but maybe you're an executive director and you're trying to think about who in your organization um, might be appropriate uh, to lead your Giving Tuesday campaign. If that's the case, I think that's such an incredible opportunity to think about whether there's some young staffer um, uh, maybe a young board member, maybe it's not even somebody in development, maybe it's, you know, somebody from another part of your organization that, you know, thinks natively like a young person that's really, you know, um, active on social media that speaks the digital native language um, of, you know, Venmo and, and Instagram and these days you go even Twitch and TikTok and all of those. You know, think about somebody who would bring a fresh perspective to how to help you reach your goal. Um, particularly if part of what you're gonna to attempt to do with your Giving Tuesday campaign is try to inspire younger supporters um, because it's a day when we know that young people really are thinking about how they can get involved and give. Um, you know, think about how you might tap this, this new fresh face to really show you what they can do on Giving Tuesday. Um, Sometimes also there's some other kind of collaborator where if you particularly if you're a really small organization, maybe there's a friend of your organization or a beneficiary who's gone through your programs who could be the person that's leading your campaign. What I always say, you know, if you have to choose passion over skill, take passion every time. In a perfect world, you'd have a passionate leader who also, you know, has some development or fundraising skills. Um, but boy, take passion over skill anytime. I've seen so many campaigns that are successful be led by people with nearly no fundraising experience, myself included. Um, one other thing that I, I like to mention here is, um, it's a little bit of a pro tip because we see this sometimes around the world. Um, you know, don't hesitate once you choose your leader to actually make one component of your campaign kind of showing your organization in action, right? In the lead up to Giving Tuesday or maybe even on Giving Tuesday itself, give your campaign leader the freedom to 
you know, do posts of you guys hard at work, you know, to do posts of your war room on Giving Tuesday where everybody's together in a room eating pizza and being silly, right? Like, like bring your organization to life for people as one of the dimensions of your campaign. And, um, and you'll be surprised at how much that makes people feel connected to you. Next slide. <clears throat> um, collaborations and partnerships are so powerful. Um, and there's a zillion different ways that this can happen. But, um, you know, here are just a couple examples that, um, that I think are really terrific. I'll start down in the bottom, um, giving Zoo Day. So, you know, zoos all around the country uh, decided a few years ago that they were going to join forces. And rather than feeling like, you know, they're sort of competing for those scarce dollars of people who, you know, support animals or support zoos, that they were going to team up because they felt like together, collectively, they could raise the voice of the importance of zoos all around the country. Um, they also thought correctly that by doing something that was sort of breaking the paradigm, you know, the, the scarcity paradigm that nonprofits are all competing, um, that by doing something collaborative, they could get media attention, they'd have people feeling really good on social media, you know, about something where people are working together instead of, you know, working apart. And, um, and it's been an incredibly successful campaign. Um, in, uh, above that one, the Warm Hearts, Warm Homes campaign, you know, think about how you might team up with a business. This is a local radio station, a, a public radio station that's teamed up with local businesses who have said that for every, you know, so many new uh, memberships that they got, um, that those, those partners would donate to um, a fuel fund to, for families in need, who in, you know, in Northern Michigan, you can imagine that that, that can be a real, uh, a really important uh, need for folks uh, in the dead of winter. Um, so again, it's a win-win. It's great marketing for the company because they're getting this visibility through their nonprofit partner. It's great for the nonprofit partner because they get to, you know, give back to the community in an innovative way. Um, and so it's a really powerful way to do a collaboration. Another one along those lines that I'll share is one that was actually from the Baltimore campaign, which is when you have an aligned mission. Um, so one of, one of our favorite partnerships um, in Be More Gives More was our favorite local running store. They've got five or six, um, they sell running shoes and running gear. And they teamed up with a nonprofit called Back on My Feet, which exists in many cities around the country and it's a running organization. Um, and what a natural partnership. And because Small Business Saturday falls the Tuesday, um, I'm sorry, Small Business Saturday falls the Saturday before Giving Tuesday, it can be a really symbiotic relationship. If you can be a big voice for a small business that's trying to drive you know, people into their store on Small Business Saturday, and they're willing to give their big megaphone to you to support your work on Giving Tuesday, it's a win-win for everybody. And maybe they'll even give a share of their proceeds to you on that day, which is what happened with this collaboration in Baltimore. Um, down at the bottom left here, this Ravens versus Texans image that you see here, this is sort of how to tap in sometimes to friendly competition with, um, you know, with another organization in, that's in a related area. And so um, this is uh, the public libraries in Baltimore and Texas, um, or Houston, decided that they were going to have a book bowl. And the book ball was following the pro football game that took place the Thanksgiving Sunday. Um, and so they, um, they gave them uh, a, a fun challenge that whoever raised the most on that day, that they, um, they, the, other team, the other public library CEO was gonna have to dress in the opposing team's uniform and read from a famous author's text. So, um, so just you know, think about some creative ways that you can um, that you can can team up with somebody where you both can sort of create a win-win opportunity through a creative or a fun collaboration. Next slide. Um, you know, we talked a few minutes ago about authenticity. You know, these are some examples from that very first campaign I led, where we had no budget. Um, and, you know, we just, we sort of, 
you know, on a shoestring, try to get people inspired by, um, by giving back to Baltimore. And you can see how just sort of grassrootsy it looks and how much it was all about sort of love for our city. And, um, and so I encourage you really, again, to think about those ways that you can create that authentic connection to your, um, to your organization's work and mission. Highlight the people who are your passionate supporters, like make them the faces of your campaign. Um, to the extent that you can, they're far more likely to share uh, if you're featuring them than if you're featuring you know, yourself or just sort of general marketing messages. Um, and so you know, give, give shout outs to those people that are really making the difference in your work. Next slide. A couple final thoughts. <clears throat> so, you know, one thing that I mentioned um, in the goal setting is that you don't have to make it about money at all. Um, one organization a few years ago did a campaign where they decided they were just wanted to do love notes to their city. So they turned the entire day around and, um, and went out at four in the morning with a, a crew of people and they wrote love notes all around the city as a way to inspire people to be generous on that day. And people were so moved in Baltimore by this idea of Love Notes to Baltimore that nonprofits all across the city of all types, including the one that sent their teams out, um, received a tremendous outpouring of support because people were inspired by this campaign. So think about how you can potentially turn the whole thing around and give thanks as a way to inspire people. Next slide. Um, a final kind of thought on low resourced organizations. We get this all the time. My organization is really small. We've only got a couple staff or we've got no staff. Um, I'll tell you one quick story about an organization that had at the time no paid staff and a teeny tiny overall budget. Um, but they wanted to make Giving Tuesday a day where they potentially could raise the, enough money to have a staff person. So it's an organization in Brooklyn, New York called Badass Brooklyn Animal Rescue. And they got a very creative group of people together and said like, what can we do to make Giving Tuesday a big thing? Um, and they decided that they were just going to show a rescue as their campaign on Giving Tuesday. And so they got in their van at, um, at midnight on Giving Tuesday, showed themselves driving from Brooklyn to Georgia, posted, tweeted, stopped at rest stops, took pictures with you know, the hats on in different states, adopted 12 dogs, gave them funny names, and this whole campaign all the way back to Brooklyn, you know, stopping at rest stops, watching the dogs do their business in the different places that they you know, got them out of the truck. And this campaign went viral and they not only got attention all over the country, but they raised enough for that staff person. So don't let, you know, your resources, you know, make you feel like you can't run a great campaign. You can just get some really creative thinkers who are in your network to come in and hang with you and, and help you come up with great ideas like this one. Next slide. Um, you know, we get this question all the time about donor fatigue because Giving Tuesday is, you know, it's on the heels of Thanksgiving and it's before year end. And what we've learned through both research and our own experience is donor fatigue is a myth. Next slide. What people are really fatigued by is the sense that they're being begged for money. So I said early on that the less you ask as a percentage of all your touches of a potential supporter, the more people are likely to give. And what that means is if you're going to have 10 touches with a potential supporter, you want eight of those touches to be telling an inspiring story, celebrating your past givers, telling about your staff people, um, sharing the impact of your work. Like eight of those touches should be things that have nothing to do with asking. Then two of those touches can be asks. And then people are primed, they're ready, they're inspired by you, they get what you're all about, then they're far more likely to give. You know, people just don't wanna feel like they're human wallets. They wanna feel like they are people who make a difference in moving the needle on causes they care about. And that's your opportunity on your Giving Tuesday campaign. Next slide. Thank you so much, Jamie. All of that insight was highly, highly valuable. I know I learned a ton uh, from your section of the presentation. So thank you so much. 
So attendees, now that you're armed with valuable insight into what works on Giving Tuesday, in this section, we'll go over recommended ways to leverage technology, give lively technology for fundraising success on the Global Day of Giving. For attendees who are not Give Lively members, just a heads up that the next few slides will highlight Give Lively tech, but we've woven in fundraising tech best practices and uses that are applicable for many fundraising platforms, so stick with us. And for Give Lively members, you have unlimited access to all Give Lively tech at any time, and we're going to go over suggested ways to mix and match our tech on this global day of giving, but know that you can design your digital campaign in whatever way works best for your nonprofit and your fundraising goals. There are multiple ways for donors to give and many solutions for online fundraising success. And our digital fundraising products allow your nonprofit to create a seamless user-friendly donation flow for your donors on Giving Tuesday, incorporating mobile optimization to engage those mobile users, as Jamie was saying, multiple payment methods to make payment as easy as possible for donors, storytelling, and more. And we're going to kick it off with a key component of our digital fundraising solution, the donation widget. As you know, your nonprofit's website is the best place to learn about your nonprofit's mission and impact. That's why it's crucial to offer an easy donation experience directly on your website throughout the year, but especially on Giving Tuesday and end of year fundraising where donors are bombarded with options and appeals to donate. One of the ways you can fundraise on Giving Tuesday is securely on your website with an embeddable donation widget, a clear streamlined appeal. Why use a widget? because they increase donor conversion by keeping the entire donation process on your nonprofit site and maintaining a strong focus on that mission brand and impact, like I just mentioned. And widgets are especially convenient for mobile visitors, tech savvy donors, social media users who prefer quick and easy ways to donate. And again, especially on Giving Tuesday when donors are on the go and um, getting many appeals from nonprofits to donate. Give Lively's donation widget can be integrated seamlessly onto your website to collect donations and they're easy to set up and customize, but also more importantly, they can be connected to an overarching, very specific campaign. And I know from the poll at the beginning, many of you are interested in campaign pages, so we'll go over that next. We recommend setting up a Giving Tuesday specific donation page to fundraise around this global day of giving. Um, campaign pages are designed to drive fundraising success around different occasions throughout the year, such as Giving Tuesday. And with campaign pages, you can create a time-based, goal-oriented, branded appeal for the day of giving that compels visitors to donate either on Giving Tuesday, leading up to Giving Tuesday, or both. With a specific donation campaign page, you can create a specific Giving Tuesday branding style, donation asks that might be a little different from your general appeals, and customize them to your liking. For example, a page that specifically says Giving Tuesday as you see here, or an end of year time appeal, like a time-based ask that has a goal and a deadline, compels donors more than an unbranded general donation page to donate, just as Jamie was saying before. And I know Jamie went over this, but on the note of setting goals, Give Lively campaign pages allow you to set a measurable and trackable goal, uh, and setting monetary goals are correlated with highly successful campaigns. Goals that are big, but logical and attainable can be a rallying cry for your supporters. People want to know exactly what they're donating to and for and that their contribution is meaningful so that, as Jamie was saying, you're not just raising money on Giving Tuesday. You're asking your supporters to help you achieve an overarching goal and that their contribution is, again, meaningful. You can create a Giving Tuesday campaign and think of this campaign page as your home base for an overarching campaign, your starting point to integrate other Give Lively products to easily expand your campaign's impact, which you can do with a donation widget, text to donate, peer-based fundraising, and more, all connected to this overarching campaign. To help you create outstanding campaign pages that carry the right message and compel donors to give, here are a few design best practices. For those of you who are not using Give Lively, these are global best practices that you can apply to most customizable fundraising pages. Throughout the process of creating a campaign, it's vitally important to tell a story. When people see your campaign, they should be reminded of your organization's mission and impact, which can be conveyed by adhering to the following best practices. Number one, engender trust with branding. 
To do this, make sure your page's look is aligned with that of your brand so supporters know your page is legitimate. It's the first thing visitors see um, when they click on your link and are driven to your donation page. And on the donation page, the first thing they see is your logo. So upload a high quality version of your logo that's easy to read and looks good on multiple devices. Use compelling imagery that also tells a story. Use an image that genuinely shows what your nonprofit does. And if you don't have imagery of your own, feel free to use a high quality stock image. We've definitely seen nonprofit members do this before successfully. One way to move people is with imagery, but also video. So if you have a video of your nonprofit's work, consider incorporating it into your campaign page to tell a compelling story. Three, in terms of writing a clear mission statement, people get excited to donate to your nonprofit based on the impact. So tell them why your organization exists, who the beneficiaries are, and how. If your end of your fundraising efforts are for a specific program, say it here, but keep it short and to the point for maximum effect. You can add images, links to other pages, and format the text as you like, but we recommend keeping it simple so the focus remains on getting donations. And then lastly, use powerful impact stories and customize your donation options. When supporters are passionate about a cause and are clear about the impact of each dollar donated, they feel more compelled to give. So you can customize the impact stories and donation op options for your Giving Tuesday specific campaign. So now that you have a built, compelling Giving Tuesday campaign, you're ready to start promoting it using a strategic combination of social media, email, and calls to action on your website. All of our pages have share buttons that make it easy to spread the word about your campaign across multiple channels. And while we're not gonna go into specific communication strategy during this webinar, and we'll give you resources for how to access those later, we'll show you creative ways to increase your campaign's visibility using our technology. One useful technique to scale your campaign's visibility with Give Lively technology is text to donate. Why text to donate? Whether you want to engage your supporters online or encourage them on the go, text to donate is a simple way for donors to give directly from their mobile phones, and it's the perfect technology to complement your Giving Tuesday strategy. Again, tying into what Jamie was saying about mobile users and mobile donors increasing year over year, text to donate is a perfect way to attract those donors, engage them, and convert them. Many think text to donate and text to give is only for live in-person fundraising. However, we've seen a lot of nonprofits use it creatively with social media like you see here. You can promote your Giving Tuesday campaign and text code on social media um, to reach donors on the go who might just be scrolling through Instagram or other social media accounts. Additionally, if you're making an appeal in print or a direct mailer or handout, if that's what your nonprofit chooses to do, you can drive donors to your campaign page by including your text code in the material so donors don't have to type in a long URL. Um, and this is one way to reduce friction between promoting your campaign page and actually converting donors to give. Another great use case for text to donate is promoting it during a live streaming event if you choose to do that on social media. And I'm just going to quickly go over how it works. Um, so donors simply text a unique text code that you choose to give Lively's five digit short code, which is 44321. Once they do that, they immediately receive a link to donate to your campaign and can make a donation in, sec in seconds. For Give Lively members, you can create unlimited text codes and associate a specific text code to your Giving Tuesday campaign. Um, and this is a really great technology to experiment with if you haven't used text to donate before. Another great way to expand your campaign's impact and visibility is building momentum with peer to peer. Peer to peer is an effective way to leverage the power of your supporters and help your organization acquire new donors and expand your network on Giving Tuesday. It's in, become an increasingly popular way to fundraise on Giving Tuesday. We've seen it with Facebook fundraising. For example, it's digital easy for fundraisers to set up and expands your nonprofit's reach significantly. We've made it easy for supporters to fundraise for your campaign using Give Lively technology to become ambassadors for your nonprofit. How should you implement peer-to-peer. -peer. That's great. That's a great question. As Jim was saying, choosing leaders and um, 
and stakeholders and passionate supporters is really beneficial for your Giving Tuesday campaign. You can target groups of existing donors or other stakeholders for your organization and encourage them to create a fundraising page on behalf of your nonprofit. You should reach out to this identified segment of supporters via email well in advance of Giving Tuesday so that leading up to Giving Tuesday, you already know what your nonprofit's potential reach is. Donations made to individual fundraising pages for giving Give Lively technology will roll up to your overall campaign goal. We're also excited, oh, and then just another note about peer-to-peer, -peer. if you're going this route, it's important to set up your fundraisers for success, and you can do this by providing draft messaging, suggesting a fundraising goal, and checking in with them periodically and consistently via email, just letting them know that you're there for them in the fundraising process and you have a stake in their success. And then finally, we're really excited to offer Teams Fundraising, which is a part of our peer-based fundraising solution. Teams Fundraising adds an extra dimension to a peer-based campaign, providing a way for groups of people with shared values to make collective appeals to the generosity of others, all in support of your nonprofit. Members of a team fundraising campaign raise more than an average peer-to-peer -peer individual fundraiser because of the collective nature of a Teams-based campaign. You can identify a group of passionate supporters, maybe your board members or volunteers, passionate leaders and supporters of your organization, and encourage them to lead a team fundraising campaign on your nonprofit's behalf. For Give Lively members, uh, our team's fundraising is currently in beta, but we've had a series of nonprofits use it successfully over the last few months, and we're really excited to be releasing it um, slowly to our nonprofit community. So if you're a Give Lively member and you're interested in experimenting with it for Giving Tuesday, simply email beta plus giving Tuesday at givelively.org and we'll also share this in the follow-up email um, and we'll enable teams so you can have access to it for Giving Tuesday. And then finally, we just want to go over what resources are available to you. Um, at Give Lively, we know technology can be tough to implement, and our goal is to make it as easy and seamless as possible. So we created, we created our technology uh, to be used by nonprofits of all sizes and technical abilities, and to help you use it as effectively as possible, we recently pulled together a resource hub, which is your one-stop shop for information and instruction about a powerful, practical, and free platform. Here you can find FAQs, guides, examples, videos, everything from a new member welcome guide for members just getting started to example pages for inspiration. Um, the resource hub is in its initial stages, so we welcome your feedback, which you can give directly in the resource hub. And again, it's at the link right here, uh, resources.givelively.org. We also have a number, a number of blog resources to help bolster your fundraising strategy. And then just a quick note about Giving Tuesday resources. Um, Giving Tuesday offers a robust wealth of information, including toolkits, guides, case studies, um, and Jamie, if you have anything to add in terms of Giving Tuesday resources, um, we'd love to hear from you. Um, at givingtuesday.org, there's tons of resources, but I think maybe we should try to turn quickly to some of these questions because I know we've got some good ones and, you know, maybe we take five minutes of questions and see if we can get, you know, answer a few of these. Awesome. Yes. Thank you so much. So we would love to hear your questions at this point. I can pick off a few of these, Molly, if... Um, if yeah, you, that would be great. Me too. Okay. Um, so one of the questions we often get is um, how nonprofits, it's a question from Matt, how nonprofits connect Giving Tuesday with year-end appeals. Um, you know, there's not a right or wrong answer to this question. You know, we definitely see organizations that create a giving arc that basically launches on Giving Tuesday and completes on December 31st. Um, but many other organizations um, do quite distinct campaigns. Um, you know, one model that I think is a really interesting experiment is if you, you know, do something that's oriented toward young people on Giving Tuesday, because we know it's a day that young people are looking for organizations to support, you know, think about, um, an event perhaps of some sort or some kind of um, of engagement and giving activity 
again, tap some young person who works on your team or who's affiliated with your organization to help you think that through. And then have your, your year end appeal, you know, be whatever your tried and true approach has been to generating support at year end. So again, not a right or wrong answer, but um, we have examples of all three types, you know, where you, they link it completely, kicking off on Giving Tuesday, going to year end when they're completely separate. Um, and when they have some connection to each other, but, um, but it's not like one is a start and one is a finish. Um, so I'd love to hear from, you know, from you, if you try one of those approaches, what worked um, for you? Um, couple questions, a number of questions about matching funds. Um, you know, matching funds aren't critical to a Great Giving Tuesday campaign. Um, they, you know, it, you've got to think carefully about how you deploy them. And um, if you do have them, you know, even if it's a small amount, you know, you do want to spread them out through the day or you want to come up with a creative way to deploy those matching funds. You know, who can matching funds come from? Um, often board members or longtime givers love supporting something like a Giving Tuesday campaign with matching funds because it's a way for them to leverage their support. And, um, you know, and it, and it can be a way to also make them feel like their dollars are going further. Like it's not just direct support of your organization, but it's direct support that's inspiring other people to get involved also. Um, Question from, um, from Polly about reaching older donors. Um, it's a really good question. Um, you know, uh, one, of the, one of the bits of advice that I give every organization is like to start with what you have, right? If you're an organization that has a, you know, sort of a traditional base of baby boomer donors, then of course you really want to start with those donors as the basis for your campaign and maybe think about how you go one step younger or move those, you know, maybe direct mail donors to phonathon donors. Like it's a continuum of activity. Um, and, you know, I think older donors are interesting because they give for different reasons. There's a whole bunch of research out there. If you literally just Google like giving behaviors of donors of various age groups, you can find some really easy to read, interesting research about, you know, what kind of donors have what preferences. Um, but older donors give out of more of a sense of obligation. You know, they feel it's their responsibility to give back to their communities. Younger donors give out of a sense of opportunity, if I have to like boil it down. So they want a sense of like, you know, because of me, they're a smidge more self-centered, <laughs> right? Because of me, like I can make the difference in somebody's life. Right, so it's more opportunity versus obligation. So, so part of it is, you know, making sure that you're reaching people in the way they want to be reached with the kind of messages that are appealing to them. Um, let's see. Um, when except Rachel asks a really good question because we've talked a lot about collaborations. Um, so, when partnerships raise money, you know, how do they disperse it? So. There's three or four methods that we've seen across the country um, and well, and across the world when, when uh, collaborations take place among nonprofits. You know, one way is proportionally. So, you know, if you've got 10 nonprofits that decide they're gonna team up on a page and they're all gonna raise money together, then, you know, what, um, if, if they each have individual tiles on the page and there's some pool of, of matching funds or there's some, some common pool because a lot of times those kind of uh, fundraisers will have the individual organizations but they'll also have what they call a common pool so that if somebody really cares about zoos but they don't care what zoo it goes to they can just give it to this like general pool that general pool or matching funds would get split proportionally that's one way that we see it we also have um, campaigns we've got a great campaign in cleveland where you know 20 social justice organizations decided to team up together. Some were bigger, some were smaller, but they decided that they were gonna share it all equally. That for this campaign, they were gonna all work equally hard. And that because that was their agreement with each other, they were gonna share everything that was raised equally. Um, 
but you know, but fast forward to the impact of that, they got a lot of media attention because they were doing this really collaborative campaign that was kind of breaking the mold with everybody sharing equally. And they all did better than any of them ever thought they would do in an individual Giving Tuesday campaign. Um, and then the final thing that we see is that sometimes one partner, if one a, you know bigger organization wants to sort of be the one to collect the funds for a collaboration of organizations, that that organization will you know collect the funds, disperse them on some pre-agreed upon formula, um, and they may take a little smidge for themselves, extra percent or something, to just you know for the time that their team will spend managing the campaign and dispersing the funds. So those are three ways that we see commonly across the country in collaborations, but we, we get all of our best information from whatever the next innovation is on the ground. So if you do something or you come up with an approach that's different from that, we'd love if you like shout us out on Twitter or Facebook, tell us what you're doing, and maybe I'll be telling your story next year. Uh, let's see. Um, and sorry to go over to, to the next slide. I just wanted to show where you can shout Giving Tuesday out on social media and our contact information for following up with questions. Great. Um, and then a couple, there, I guess Astrid or Anna Astrid has asked about Giving Tuesday materials being uh, available in other languages. Yes, there's lots of Giving Tuesday information in other language. They languages. They tend to be um, generated by our country leaders around the world. So depending on what language you need, if you go to, if you just go to info at givingtuesday.org and ask them for it, you know, for, for information, in the language that you're looking for, we may be able to find that for you uh, translated by one of our country leaders. Um, Molly, as you guys are scrolling through, any other questions that you want answered? Sorry, I just had to take myself off mute. You know what, for um, Give Lively tech specific related questions, I think the best way to reach out to us is at membership at givelively.org or support at givelively.org. We also have a chat feature on our website with a team of customer support specialists who'd be happy to answer any questions for you. We do see a lot of questions coming in here that are specific to our technology, so we'd be happy to answer those questions then. Um, you can also reach out to us at Instagram and Twitter. Um, and Jamie, did you have anything else to add? Uh, I was just gonna answer Kit. Yes, there is a DC community campaign. Um, it's led by Catalog of Philanthropy and you should reach out to those guys. They, they do a great campaign. Awesome, okay, great. So we will wrap it up. Thank you so much for all of the attendees who stuck with us for 10 minutes past the time we promised you. Um, we really appreciate you joining us on the webinar today. Again, for any follow-up questions, please reach out to us. We're here to answer any questions, as is Giving Tuesday, and there's a wealth of resources and information that Giving Tuesday has on their website to make your Giving Tuesday campaign a success. Uh, and thank you so much for joining us today. Happy fundraising. Thanks, you. Thanks everybody.